Welcome to an introduction of the Genesis Edge 534 with Monet, part of LinkSpring's portfolio of Edge-enabled products. Enjoy the full features and functionality of Niagara 4 with a built-in 900 MHz wireless transceiver. Mix and match devices to easily deploy a Monet sensor network building wide. All right, let's take a look at what we get when we receive the box. First, you should be getting a antenna that looks somewhat like this. When you open up your box, you'll notice that it has a sticker on it that will tell you the information about your Monet device. When we open it up, there's quite a bit of documentation in here. You want to make sure that you go ahead and read all of that in detail. It's going to provide you critical information about where to find your drivers and various updates and things like that. It will also give you some information, for example, if we look at this one here. It tells us about how we can do the powering and wiring guide. It's very critical with our LinkSpring Edge devices that you do that properly. You don't want to have this device uh, burn out on you or anything like that. So we have that. We have our lovely installation guide here that's going to provide you with information, as you might guess, on how to install this product. The next thing that I have here is a wiring installation guide and if I open that up you'll notice I have several pages here of information about how I should wire this device in order to get the best use out of it. I then have my lovely edged monet device. It's going to be wrapped in some bubble wrap just like this so that we make sure that it's protected. If I open that up You'll notice that I have my Genesis Edge and it should say Monet with Niagara 4 on it. If it does not, then you need to contact us and let us know. One other thing I want to point out, if you notice inside of the top of my box here, I also have information about that install guide. So if for some reason you don't have this install guide that came with it, you will be able to go out on the web and get another copy of all of these documents. Just a few quick tips on wiring your Edge 534 now that you have it out of the box. First thing, you're going to want to put that antenna on there. I've already done it. It takes a little bit of screwing to get it on there, but it goes in this lovely area that is marked on the top and looks like where you would put the antenna. Remember, any of our Edge 534 devices will need to have a dedicated 24 volt power supply that goes to them. I have one already sort of pre-made here with a standard plug that goes in my wall. I turn it over, that's going to go down here and I just plug that in and we're good to go. I will need to of course plug that into my power strip before I start getting any lights. Once I plug that in, you'll notice the power should come on as a steady light my heartbeat will start flashing and then the little lightning bolt will come up once it has booted up and is ready to go. In your box, when you receive this, you should receive some wiring guides that will give you information about other wiring that you may wish to do with this device. Before you begin, you will want to ensure you have downloaded and installed the appropriate Onyx drivers as well as the Onyx Monet device template and installed them in your install directory. You will also want to check and ensure that you have downloaded the latest firmware for your device. Once you have done this, go to the station and then under config double click on the drivers. You may add the Onyx Monet network from the palette or by utilizing the drop down in the new menu. When you add it, you may choose to change the name if so desired. Once you have added it, you will want to return to the nav tree and double click on the Onyx Monet network. Once you are inside the network, you can select the appropriate template and drag it into the database at the bottom of the screen. This will bring over the information necessary in order to configure the particular device. You will need to ensure that you have enabled the device as well as adding the device ID and security code located on the side of the device. Each device will have different settings depending on its type. What I have here is my Monet temperature sensor that I'm using as the demo for this video. Pretty straightforward sensor, not a whole lot to it. You'll notice if I open up the top here, I have not yet put in the battery. 
That's what you're going to do after you've got everything configured in your system. If you put this battery in and you turn it on before you have everything configured, it's going to start looking for a connection and one of two things might happen. One, if it can't find that connection for an extended period of time, it may actually run out of battery power. And the other thing it will do is after a certain length of time, it will actually sort of time out and it will stop looking until a significant time has passed. That way it tries to preserve that battery power for you. The other thing that we want to notice on here is on the side of my device, I have the information that I need in terms of my ID and my code that I will be putting into Niagara. So Niagara knows how to find this specific device. Once this ID and this uh, SC as it's labeled here are put into Niagara and this device has its battery in it, it gets powered up, they get connected together, this vice device will not look for any other Niagara network. It is paired with that Niagara network until you take it off of that Niagara network. It will do updates to its configuration and it will send back data depending on how you have Niagara configured. Now that we have the device ID and security code, we can continue filling in the rest of our information for this sensor. In this case, it is a temperature sensor, so we may wish to set a wear state lower and higher limits. Notice when you add your sensor, it will come in as a status of down and a health of fail. First, you want to go to the property sheet and ensure that you have actually enabled your Niagara Onyx Monit network. Once you've done that, you will need to go in and make sure that your device has the batteries put into it at this point. You may find that it will still tell you that the device is overdue for a check-in. You may wish to go ahead and do a right-click action ping to ensure that it does try to connect after you've plugged it in. Once you've done that and you have a health of OK, you can go over and open up your network and the device and the points in order to locate the specific point for this device. In this case, the temperature. This is a standard Niagara numeric point that I can manipulate just like any other point. Let's examine some sensor specific information. Button press sensors enter the aware state and report a press or a true value to Niagara when the button is pressed and released. Note, the report occurs after you release the button. After a single aware heartbeat, a lack of press or a false value is reported to Niagara. The temperature sensor enters aware state if the measured temperature is less than the lower aware state threshold or greater than the upper aware state threshold. If neither condition is met, the next time it takes a measurement, then it will leave the aware state. Humidity sensors enter the aware state if the measured humidity is less than the lower aware state threshold or greater than the upper aware state threshold. If neither condition is met the next time it takes a measurement, it will leave the aware state. Dry contact sensors check in immediately on a state change between open for contact and closed for no contact. If configured to be in aware state when the contacts are closed or open, the sensor will enter aware state when it detects the appropriate condition and return to normal state when it detects the opposite. If set to be in aware state on a state change, the sensor enters aware state any time the condition exists and exits the aware state after one aware heartbeat. As with the dry contact sensors, the water detect sensor checks in immediately upon state change, in this case between present contact and absent no contact. If configured to be in aware state when contacts are present or absent, the sensor enters aware state when it detects the appropriate condition and returns to normal state when it detects the opposite. If set to be in aware state on a state change, then the sensor enters aware state when the condition changes and exits aware state after one aware heartbeat. The PIR motion sensor's behavior depends on the configuration of the event aware state and report immediately on status fields. For the event aware state, you might select no motion, where the sensor enters the aware state when it detects a lack of motion, 
motion, where the sensor enters the aware state when it detects motion, or state change, where the sensor enters aware state when motion starts or stops and leaves aware state after one aware heartbeat. For report immediately on status, you might select aware reading, where the sensor remains in aware state until the end of an aware heartbeat interval, or all state changes, where the sensor leaves aware state as soon as it no longer detects the condition for which it entered the aware state. The pulse counter has an overflow count and an aware overflow count. The sensor enters aware state if the number of pulses between heartbeats equals the overflow count, and it stays in aware state if the number of pulses between aware heartbeats equals the aware overflow count. Otherwise, it leaves the aware state. Note, hitting the normal overflow count again is not enough to stay in aware state. The ultrasonic ranger enters the aware state if the measured distance is less than the lower aware state threshold or greater than the upper aware state threshold. If neither condition is met the next time it takes a measurement, it will leave aware state. The tilt sensor enters aware state if the measured pitch is less than the lower aware state pitch threshold or greater than the upper aware state pitch threshold. or if the measured roll is less than the lower aware state roll threshold or greater than the upper aware state thre roll threshold. If none of these conditions are met, the next time it takes a measurement, it leaves the aware state. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe for LinkSpring product updates.